Okay, good afternoon and welcome to lecture four uh, in our MAE 113 calculus for the liberal arts. Today we'll be doing review and uh, we'll be covering sections R3 and R4 in the textbook. I'm Richard Kohar and thank you for tuning in on this Monday afternoon. We're going to continue doing our law of exponents. We covered this in last lecture, and so we've uh, got about six rules. And so let's just use a couple of these rules now, and we'll do a couple of examples. So, for instance, we can have uh, 3 to the ninth times 5 to the ninth. And we can simplify this using one of our rules here. So um, in this case, we can use rule 3. We have um, two different bases, but the same exponent. So in this case, we can actually simplify. Perfect. Thank you, Maria, for saying that you can hear us, or hear me. Uh, that's good. So 3 times 5 gives me 15, it's still to the ninth. Um, still in this technological age, there's a lot of things that could go wrong. So if there is something that goes wrong, for instance, like the video cuts out, the audio goes out, make sure to quickly bash into the keyboard and tell me so I can fix that. Uh, we did a, so we can actually reduce this 3 to the ninth times 5 to the ninth is equal to 15 to the ninth. The next thing that we can do is, here's another example. We have 3 squared times 3 to the fifth. And using another rule that we have, which is basically we can, if they're, the bases are the same and we have different exponents, then we just add the exponents together. So in this case, we have 3 so the same base but different exponents so it's uh, 2 plus 5 and that's equal to 3 to the seventh here's another example uh, if we had 3 squared all to the exponent 5. Well, then using our rules again, let's have a look. It's right here b to the m to the n. So in this case, it multiplies the exponents. So we get 3, 2 times 5, or 3 to the tenth. So again, these rules just help us to simplify things or to um, avoid having to write out, you know, more comp complicated expressions. You have the year wrong on this video's title. Oh, okay. I will have to change that. I thought for a second that I had gotten the date wrong on there. It is 2021, but yes, if I did put the date wrong, I can't quite see it. But yes, I will get to that. Easily fixed in post. Um, let's do something a little bit more challenging. Here's, I have 2 times 3 to the minus 2 times 4 all divided by one third squared. Okay, so part of our rules is that I can, when I have a negative expression, or sorry, I have a negative exponent, I can actually move that into the denominator. So actually, I can, if I draw my line here, uh, the 2 times 3 to the minus 2, that becomes positive if I move into the denominator. 
Okay. I'll leave the four alone up top here. Now the other thing too is with the one third. Um, this one third I have squared. So again, I can apply that to each the top and the bottom. So I get one squared times three squared. That's still just one over three squared. And I can actually rewrite that as three to the minus two. Now when I have one third squared and it's equivalent to three to the negative two, I can actually bring this to the numerator and that becomes positive then. So I can actually write three times like that. Okay, so what can I do now to simplify this further? Um, let's have a look. I can use this rule here, which is uh, I have 2 times 3 squared, so I can apply the exponent to each one. So I have 2 squared times 3 squared. I have uh, 3 squared and 3 squared on the numerator and denominator, so that simplifies down to just 1. So I'm left with 4 over 2 squared. And 2 squared is, of course, equal to 4. 4 over 4 is 1. So I've simplified it. So I've, I've got it from a very weird looking expression to something very simple, 1. Part eight. Uh, let's do 9 and 3 halves. So, using our rules, I'm going to use this one right here, our sixth rule here. And what I'm going to do is do 9 cubed all to the 1 half. So 9 cubed might be a little difficult, but again, 9 cubed, 81, 7, 29. And then the half gives me the square root. And uh, the square root of 729 is 27. Okay, that might have been difficult for some, um, but remember, here I have 3 to the 1 half. So remember that I could do 9, this is equal to 3, sorry, 9 to the 3 times 1 half. And remember that multiplication is commutative, meaning that I can change the order. So I could either write it like this or like this. So I could actually do it 9 to the one half, which is square root of nine, all uh, cubed. This one might be a little bit easier. So the square root of nine is three, and then we still have the cubed out front. Three cubed is still equal to 27. So again, there's two different ways of doing the same thing. I still get the same answer. It means that I probably got this one correct. But sometimes for for some, you know, one way is easier than the other. Okay. Okay, so basically that was our review of straight lines, or sorry, of ex law of exponents. And now we can actually move on to a review of straight lines. So the first thing that uh, we should look at is 
uh, the formula for calculating the distance from or between two points. So the distance between two points. So for instance, I could have I'll use a ruler. So I will pick two points here. So I'll just say here and here, and I'll label them. So this one I'll call x1, y1. Up here I'll call x2, y2. And so how do we get the distance between this? Well, what we'll do is um, it's an application of Pythagoras' theorem. So what we can do, hopefully I have it dried enough. Okay. So I'll have an extra point here. So I can do what I've created, I'm trying to do is create a right angle triangle. Oops. There we go. So Pythagoras' theorem is c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. So how do we come up with the length of this line right here? Well, um, this coordinate here would be equal to x2, just from up here. And the coordinate for the y would be y1. So the length of this would be, um, because it's along y1, would be just x2 minus x1. And then the length along here would be y2 minus y1. And that would be the length, which is the c squared in this part for Pythagoras' theorem. So what we do is basically we, uh, if we wanted to know what the length of c was, well, c is equal to the square root of that. So it becomes a squared plus b squared. So this would be our c. Um, so the distance between two points is really our c. And so then our length is equal to, so it's the this side right here, which is x2 minus x1, all squared, plus this side, which is y2 minus y1 squared, and then we take the square root. Now in the textbook, they write this as x1 minus x2 squared plus y1 minus y2 squared. So why is my formula OK? Why is this one the same as this one? Because when we have subtraction, doesn't the order matter? most cases yes but whenever we square something it becomes positive so the same thing happens here uh, we have x1 and x2 when we square it it's still positive so again we end up getting the same value so we don't actually have to worry about that so in this case when I was doing x2 minus x1 perfectly fine because I'm going to square it 
So again, this is the same formula. These are both equivalent. Okay, so let's do an example of that. Number the sheet. So I don't. Let's see if I can try to keep that together. Uh, maybe, maybe there. Okay. So here's our example. So let's do, what's the distance between the point 1, 2 Okay, it is leggy. Um, is there anyone else who is having experiences uh, that are experiencing lag in the in the stream? Oh, okay. I just saw a little glitch, so I'm not sure what happened there. I'm I'm being told by YouTube that it's the the stream health is okay. Okay, perfect. Okay. If there is any issues with it, um, hopefully, um, if it's not on my end, it's on your end, that um, afterwards you should be able to replay anything that you missed. So, hopefully that's the backup. That's, that's the plan. Okay, try tuning the video resolution down on yes. Yeah, if if it's if you're watching this in HD and it's you know your uh, connection isn't strong enough, bumping it down to 720, 480, 360, etc. might help. Okay, so the distance between these points. So again, um here's x1, y1. Here's x2, y2. So then the distance between that, so uh, let's do it. So it'll be 3 minus 1 squared plus 4 minus 2 squared all to the square root. And now we just do, you know, regular uh, arithmetic for this. So 3 minus 1 is 2, so 2 squared, plus 4 minus 2 is 2, so 2 squared. I have 4 plus 4, or that's equivalent to uh, 2 times 4, square root of 2 times square root of 4 is 2, so 2 square root of 2. Okay, so we did that. Okay. The, okay, now that we've done the distance, um, the linear function is usually expressed as y equals mx plus b. m in this case is the slope, which we can saw or we can actually um, write out as uh, the change in y over the change in x, 
which is y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus perfect x2 minus x1 and this is called the y-intercept and of course we shouldn't give a little sketch so here's my x-axis here's my y-axis here's some random line so this point right here that is the y-intercept and the slope of the line here's the change in y and here's the change in x and that is the slope Okay. So usually when you have a linear function or you're going to create a linear function, you need two pieces of information. So um, you can either use two points, or the second one is that you can use one point and a slope. So. For example, um, I could give you a point and a slope. So here's a point 1, 1, and a slope of 5. And uh, using our formula up here, y equals mx plus b, I can substitute in those values into here. So I have my point. So I have x, which goes in here. I have y, which goes in there. So I have 1, and I have 1 here. I have the m, which is 5. And I'm just left with b to solve. So therefore, the equation of the line for this one is y equals 5x minus 4. So in this case I had uh, I knew what the slope was I just needed to figure out what the intercept was the y-intercept and so there's my equation of the line. So uh, my next example, of course, would be two points. I don't know what uh, M is. I don't know what B is. Mm, so the first thing that I'll do is I'll figure out what the slope is. So the slope is the change in Y over the change in x. So uh, let's do the change in y first, which is 6 minus 3 divided by 1 minus 2. 6 minus 3 is 3 over minus 1 
gives me minus 3. And now I can figure out what b is. I have um, in my equation y equals mx plus b. I can pick one of the points here and I can use my slope. So my slope here is minus 3. I'm going to pick the point 2, 3 here. So substituting in the point 2, 3, my y is 3, my x is 2, plus b. Minus 3 times 2 gives me minus 6. And then I solve for b. So there's my y-intercept, there's my slope, so my equation of the line is minus 3x plus 9. Sometimes in the back of the book, maybe they might factor that out. So they might have, say, um, minus 3, and then you would get x minus 3. Now, sometimes you might want to go uh, and check if you've got the right one. To do that, we can just use the second point that we were given. So with the point 1, 6, I use y equals, and I substitute my, my x value. So I get um, minus 3 times 1 plus 9 gives me minus 3 plus 9, which gives me 6, which gives me the y value. So that's correct. Sometimes the equation can be written in a different form. So you could have like 3y plus 8x plus 5 equals 0. And they might ask you what the slope is and what the y-intercept is. And to do that, we just have to rearrange it into our y equals mx plus b form. So rearranging that, I can bring the minus 5 to the right-hand side. That becomes minus 5. I can bring the minus 8 to the right-hand side, so that becomes minus 8x. And I'm left with 3y on the left-hand side, dividing 3 over everything. I'm left with y equals minus 8x minus 5 all over 3. And I can apply that uh, denominator on each term. So I can just rewrite that as minus 8 thirds x minus five-thirds. And so right here, our slope is minus eight-thirds, and our y-intercept is minus five-thirds. So a question that might arise what is the equation of a vertical line? Well, what do I mean by a vertical line? Basically, what I mean is, is that it's parallel to the y-axis.
So what is the slope then of that? So we have m over delta y over delta x. So in this case, I would have something like y2. Oops. I have to remember the y is in the second position. So uh, let's pick a point. So this point here, let's call that just x1. And here we'll call this y1, and here would be y2. So in this position, it would be x1, comma, y1. And in this position would be x1, comma, y2. So we can do the difference between y2 minus y1. But the problem that we have then is this in the change in x, that we'll have x1 minus x1. And so x1 minus x1 is 0. And that means that this is undefined. So in this case, we can't actually write a y equals mx plus b form for an equation of a vertical line. So instead, what we do is uh, since um, the y values, it's, it's whatever you want it to be, um, we just simply specify what the x1 is. So in this case, it you know it's equal to whatever you want it. So in this case, if I said um, you know this x1 is equal to three, well then in that case we would just simply write that the equation of the line would be x equals three, and that's it, because it doesn't matter where all the values of y would be, you know, right here. It's what is important for us is to specify the x. Okay. So we answered that. <laughs> Let's do four. What's the next thing that I need to cover? Um, parallel lines. So if we have parallel lines or like skis, Parallel lines. Then what that means is that the slope, the slopes of the lines are the same. And if I have the other one is, of course, perpendicular. That's at 90 degrees. So there's perpendicular. The slopes are the negative reciprocal of each other, of each other. There we go. So in this case, um, if I gave a slope of m1 and m2, so here's m1, here's m2, these are equal. And if I had a slope here, which is m1 and m2, what I mean is, is with the negative reciprocal, is that m1 is equal to the minus 1 over m2. Okay, 
So for instance, if they said, you know, create a line that's parallel to a line given, well then you can create something where you have the same slope, so the same m. And if you were given a line to be perpendicular, then a, the slope that you would have to find, you'd have to find the slope of the line that you've, you're given, and then come up with the negative reciprocal of that. Okay, so the last thing that we'll do is an example of um, converting temperatures. Hopefully I'm not going too quickly for anyone. If you're okay with how I'm go how fast I'm going with this, um, give a thumbs up in the chat or something so that I know that you're following along. And um, we're gonna convert temperature. So I know for instance that um, in Celsius, zero Celsius, which is where water freezes, is 32 degrees Fahrenheit. And I know that water boils at 100 Celsius. Uh, it boils at a very strange temperature of 212. Perfect, good, thank you. <laughs> good to see thumbs up. Or emojis or whatever. I don't have any cool Twitch things yet. Perfect. So these are my temperatures I'm gonna do. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create my x comma y will be C comma F. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna convert my point, my, my knowledge that I've done here to points. So I have two data points and I can tell you that the temperature between Celsius and Fahrenheit are linear. So I can um, 0 comma 32 and I also can do 100 comma 212. So I, I want what I'm required, the equation of a line. So from here, I can find the slope. So the change in y over the change in x. So uh, 212 minus 32 over 100 divided by 0. I'm oh, sorry, 100 minus 0, not divided by 0. Um, the other thing to be very careful of is, is I see some students uh, mix up uh, the, they put the y in the numerator, sorry, the y in the numerator the x in the numerator and the y in the denominator. So they'll have the slope um, reversed. So just be very careful. That's a very common mistake. And um, it gives you an incorrect answer if you do it the other way. So 212 minus 32. I'm having, yes, it's 180. Okay. And 100 minus 0, that's something I can do still. Okay, so I can divide by 10. So I'm left with 18 over 10. And that's still not relatively prime to each other. So I can divide still by another one by 2. So uh, dividing by 2 on the new 10 divided by 2 gives me 5. 18 divided by 2 gives me 9. So I have 9 fifths. There's my slope. The nice thing about this is that... Um, I don't have to really worry about the y-intercept because the y-intercept is where it crosses the uh, y-axis and I know it crosses at 32 so there's my right there so therefore to go from to go from Celsius to Fahrenheit, or my x to y, I have y is equal to 9 fifths x plus 
32. Okay, so for instance, um, when I when I was still in Gerard, we had the old thermostats. We actually had uh, still in Fahrenheit. So, um, oh, let's do an example of what's the temperature. So, what is twenty degrees Celsius in degrees Fahrenheit? So what I would do is just substitute in here. So I got y equals 9 fifths times 20 plus 32. 5 goes into 20 four times. So I'm left with 9 times 4 plus 32. 9 times 4 is 36 plus 32. 6 and 2 is 8. 6, so 68 degrees Fahrenheit. So just to give you an idea of what that what this kind of looks like, you know, I'll just kind of sketch this out. Just the 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 graph here, and um, so this would be like degrees Celsius. Here's degrees Fahrenheit, and uh, we know that it crosses the uh, y-axis here. Let's say 0, 0,32. We know it. This might not be great to scale, but 100, 212. And somewhere along here, you know, here's 20, 68. So that's just a quick sketch. Um, can we go the opposite direction? Yes, yes we can. So to do Okay, I better keep that on there. So this is the equation that I have for so it's y equals nine fifths x plus thirty-two. So to go from Fahrenheit to Celsius, what we need to do is solve for x. Okay, so we can um, I need to isolate for x. So I can bring oh, the 32 over to the right-hand side. So I get y minus 32 equals 9 fifths x. Then I'm going to divide by 9 fifths. that cancels. I'm left with x equals um, when I have a fraction I am multiplying by its reciprocal so it becomes 9, sorry, 5 ninths times y minus 32. So for instance, if you didn't like what I did there, I have 9 fifths. Okay, that's also equal to, using our exponential rules, 9 over 5 to the minus 1. 
I had my rules here. I must have put them on the floor. Okay. So that's okay. And to get rid of that, I can just flip it. So again, that can be thought of as 9 to the minus 1, 5 to the minus 1. And to get these exponents positive, I just exchange. I move the 5 into the numerator, and that becomes 5 to the 1. And I move the 9 into the denominator, and that becomes positive. So again, 5 ninths. So that's my conversion. So if I wanted to go from Fahrenheit to Celsius, this is what I would use. So um, I calculated that it was 68 degrees Fahrenheit. I should be able to get 20 back in this formula. So if I did 5 ninths times 68 minus 32, and 68 minus 32, is 36. 9 goes into 36 4 times. So I'm left with 5 times 4, which is 20. So we correctly did that. So again, this is just our check. So if things have a linear relationship, um, we are then able to find a line. We are able to go back and forth between the two. What we've actually done is, if this was our uh, line, our equation of a line, in this case, actually what we've done is we found the inverse. So. That is actually the inverse of y equals 9 fifths x plus 32. Perfect. So we covered all the material then for the quiz tomorrow. It's. Um, That's tomorrow. It will be focusing on assignment one that was posted on Moodle. So make sure that you have completed the assignment. Uh, the questions are from the textbook. The textbook is available through Moodle as well as the Caltech website. The solutions are also provided. I think answers are there's uh, actual answers that are provided at the back of the book. And there is also a student solutions manual that you can use if you get stuck. The quiz will be at the beginning of uh, just before, well, at our time slot. So it's at the beginning of our time slot tomorrow. And uh, it will be done through Moodle. We'll have between 10 and 15 minutes. And then after that, we'll resume um, the class online through YouTube and I'll continue to give new material and I will also post then the assignment. Is there any questions before we sign off for today? And again, um, I will post the lecture notes that we've done here online through Moodle. So if you didn't feel like writing, uh, these will be readily available for you to use. Perfect, no questions. Yes, so this should be fairly straightforward. This is material that we've covered in 103. And um, be you know ready to uh, do the quiz tomorrow online. Um, you won't really have to do um, 
kind of written show me the work it'll be just you know required to show you or show me what the final answer is but I would say make sure that you have some paper and a pencil nearby so that you can scratch something out if you need to figure out something and then you'll just enter in your answer into the um, Moodle okay I'll see everyone tomorrow and have a good night